The Tesla Semi crushes the US competition with unrivaled range, blazing fast charging, and stellar efficiency. But how does it stack up against Europe's top electric semi trucks? I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. The reason I'm making this video is actually a response to a YouTube comment on one of my recent videos. At Oliver Reinhard left this comment on one of my videos. John, you should take time to watch the German Electro Trucker channel, audio in English available, where an EV enthusiast learned to drive long distance trucks and now works as a full-time truck driver solely in electrical trucks. Recently, he completed a round trip from Northern Germany all the way to Gibraltar, 4,500 kilometers, in a brand new Mercedes E Actros 600 usable 600 kilowatt hour LPF battery, he meant their LFP battery, loaded, 42 tons gross. At times, he used less than one kilowatt hour per kilometer on average. This seems to beat the Tesla semi figures you quoted. So initially in response to this, I did just a little bit of research and wrote the following reply. Thanks for bringing that up. It looks like the Mercedes E Actros 600 4x2 truck, the Tesla Semi is a 6x4 truck, is able to go 500 kilometers, 311 miles on a single charge with a gross vehicle weight of 40 tons. With a 621 kilowatt hour battery, that is an efficiency loaded of approximately 2 kilowatt hours per mile, which is good, but not as good as the Tesla Semi. If the Tesla Semi were a 4x2 and had a 621 kilowatt hour battery, its efficiency would be much better. Essentially, a bigger, more powerful Tesla Semi is still more efficient and has a longer range than the smaller Mercedes. However, after writing that response, I decided to do a little bit more research, not only into this particular example that was mentioned here from the Electro Trucker YouTube channel. I'm going to go over that, but also I want to, in this video, compare the Tesla Semi to other electric semi trucks that are available in Europe and see if it's as dominant as it is here in the US with the European competition. So once again, going back to the example that was mentioned in that YouTube comment from the Electro Trucker YouTube channel, I think it's important that we actually dive into the real world use case of the Mercedes E Actros 600 and compare that to real world use cases of the Tesla Semi when it comes to efficiency, because that's one of the things I think is really important for semi trucks. How efficient they are is super important, not only for the cost of operation, but also how many miles of range you get with the battery size available and that makes the truck more practical if it has more range. With that being said, the Tesla Semi on their website is rated at less than two kilowatt hours per mile, which is almost identical to what the E-Actro 600 is rated for. So to see how these trucks really compare, we need to dive in a little deeper and look at the real world range from this example that was brought up. So I analyzed the YouTube video he referenced and I scrubbed through the video that was published on June 29th this year entitled 2% battery on the mountain. Will the E-Actros make it to Gibraltar with 42 tons? From that video, I was able to come up with eight reference points of data for the truck. I've summarized it here in this table and you can see the various efficiencies. And then at the bottom, I've actually done the math and averaged that out, not only the kilowatt hours per kilometer, but also the kilowatt hours per mile efficiency for that particular trip. So you can see an average efficiency of 1.105 kilowatt hours per kilometer or 1.779 kilowatt hours per mile. As you can see on this chart, the real world efficiencies for the Tesla Semi based on various loads, lighter loads like with Frito-Lay and heavier loads with Pepsi, DHL, Seiya and ABF Freight, you can see that the real world efficiency of the Tesla Semi is somewhere between 1.29 kilowatt hours per mile or 0.801 kilowatt hours per kilometer to somewhere around 1.73 kilowatt hours per mile or 1.075 kilowatt hours per kilometer. So although in this example, the Mercedes E Actro 600 efficiency is close, the Tesla Semi still appears to be more efficient than that truck. With that being said, it is important once again to point out that we really don't have an apples to apples comparison here, comparing the Tesla Semi to the European competition, like for example, the E Actros 600, because there are several key differences. First of all, the gross vehicle weight difference allowed in Europe versus the United States. 
On US roads, the max weight for electric semi-trucks is 82,000 pounds or 41 tons. However, some countries like France allow up to 44 metric tons, which is around 97,000 pounds. That definitely makes a difference when it comes to efficiency. But there's also another caveat here. The Tesla Semi actually is a six by four semi truck, meaning it has four wheels that have drive units connected to them. Whereas the E-Actros 600 is a four by two truck. It actually only has two wheels that have drive units connected to it. In addition, the Tesla Semi powertrain has much more horsepower than the Mercedes E-Actros 600. So these are not apples to apples comparisons. We have to kind of keep that in mind. But nonetheless, it looks like the Mercedes E-Actros 600 is comparable when it comes to efficiency, but if you were to take the Tesla Semi and make it a four by two truck, and in addition, lower the horsepower of the truck to make the motors more efficient, then the Tesla Semi would actually be quite a bit more efficient in my opinion than the Mercedes E-Actros 600. But what Mercedes has done with this truck is still impressive. With that being said though, I wanna compare the Tesla Semi to more than just the E-Actros. And I wanna start first by going over motor horsepower or powertrain horsepower for the Tesla Semi versus the main European competition. So according to Dan Priestley on a Jay Leno's Garage video, the Tesla Semi powertrain has up to 1500 horsepower available. With that being said though, as was referenced in this Electrek article, the Tesla Semi powertrain does not necessarily put out 1500 horsepower at all times. In this article, it was written, quote, Priestley also said that Tesla Semi has about 1500 horsepower of power available, but Tesla curates that to a customer specific profile for a longer lasting vehicle. The power is there, but it is tuned to give it torque when there is a need, but also to save the tires and to get more efficiency when possible. So it looks like with Tesla software, they can actually tailor the amount of power that each company needs with each truck with a maximum of 1500 horsepower available. But if companies want a longer lasting, more efficient truck that can be dialed down a little bit. In addition to that, the powertrain that Tesla designed, it actually has three independent motors on the rear axles. However, when cruising down the highway, two of those motors can actually disengage to allow just a single motor to actually keep the truck at a fixed speed, which is going to be much more efficient for the truck. But as soon as more power is needed, the other two motors can re-engage to give the truck good acceleration. And the amount of power available for the Tesla Semi in a real world application can be seen in this particular video that Tesla has made available, showing the Tesla Semi driving up the Donner Pass and passing easily other diesel semi trucks. So with that being said, moving to the competition, you can see that nothing even comes close to the Tesla Semi in available motor power. And do note on this chart that I'm actually comparing the Tesla Semi here to two electric trucks that aren't officially available yet, but some of the specs are available and these are 2026 models. The 2026 Volvo FH Aero Electric and the 2026 Scania R400E. I wanted to compare them to the latest and greatest technology, However, it's important to note that with the Tesla Semi specs that I'm comparing here, this is actually still for the prototype version that's being produced right now. The version 2.0 mass production of the Tesla Semi is not in production just yet, but limited production is supposed to start at the end of this year and it's supposed to scale into 2026. That particular truck will almost certainly have some upgrades from the current version of the truck and could even be more efficient than the current version of the truck. But even the current version of the Tesla Semi is very impressive when it comes to the powertrain. With that being said, despite not having an apples to apples comparison here, I still wanna talk about the efficiency of the Tesla Semi compared to these various electric trucks that are available in Europe. So in this chart, you can see that I have a column for the rated efficiency and also for several of the real world efficiency numbers for examples I was able to find. So just looking at a surface level here, it looks like the MAN ETGX is the most efficient truck on this list. However, it is important to note that based on my research, that particular efficiency there, that real world efficiency number was not fully loaded and with a much less powerful motor. 
So I do recommend that maybe you pause the screen here and look at this chart in depth here. I do have some notes there. And when you look at it, once again, it's difficult here because we don't have apples to apples comparisons. There are a lot of differences here where maybe the real world example didn't have the same amount of weight. It's on different roads things like that with much less horsepower with different amounts of drive motors, etc. So it's not easy to make an exact comparison here. But nonetheless, when you look at what the Tesla Semi is with the amount of power that it has with a very large battery and with it being a six by four truck, the Tesla Semi, the fact that it is as efficient as it is, is very impressive. Okay, beyond all that, what about the charging speed? The Tesla Semi is very impressive when it comes to charging, but how do these electric semi trucks available in Europe compare? Well, according to Tesla's website, the Tesla Semi is able to charge 70% in 30 minutes with the max power available. That means in that 30 minutes, you add around 350 miles of range or 560 kilometers. And if you do the math there, that means you're adding 11.7 miles per minute of charging or 18.7 kilometers per minute of charging. When you compare that to the competition based on my research here, the miles being added per minute and the kilometers being added per minute are not even close with the competition as compared to the Tesla Semi. Now, as of right now, the Tesla Semi is not available in Europe. But one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video was not only because of the YouTube comment, but also Dan Priestley last year made some comments about Tesla wanting to target Europe for the Tesla Semi in the somewhat near future. During the 2024 IAA Transportation Expo, during Dan Priestley's keynote, he mentioned, we want to be part of this, speaking about the European commercial trucking industry. We want to help leverage the experience we have. We designed the Semi from day one to be a compelling product across multiple markets, including Europe. Thanks to the 2020 rules, the dimensions and weights, direct modifications, the Tesla Semi will be street legal in Europe and be compatible with European trailers. Now we are constructing a factory outside of Reno, Nevada, near one of our existing plants that will be capable of building more than 50,000 units a year. We look forward to scaling production throughout 2026, and we see that Europe is the next market following the ramp in North America. So if Tesla is ramping up their semi mass production in 2026 here in the United States, so I'm hoping that Tesla semis are in mass production in Europe by around 2028 or 2029 by the latest. And in addition, I think it's very possible that the most popular variant of the Tesla semi in Europe very well could be the standard range version of the truck, which is supposed to get around 300 miles of range or 500 kilometers of range on a single charge. That truck is not only around 1500 kilograms lighter than the long range Tesla semi truck, but it also looks to be a smaller truck overall as well, which is great for European roads. I do want to say thank you to Zangler, the Tesla semi advocate on YouTube for allowing me to use clips from his channel. But as you can see in this video, the standard range Tesla semi does look quite a bit smaller than the long range Tesla Semi. And I think it's very possible that Tesla could build this truck with a four by two or six by two design for the European market. And that could very well make this truck more efficient than the long range version is today. So as I've shown in this video, even the version of the Tesla Semi that's being built right now, the long range version of the Tesla Semi, it appears very competitive with the European market and it should do very well. But once again, we don't even know the improvements that Tesla is making to version 2.0 of the Tesla Semi, the mass production version, which once again should be in production at the very end of this year, scaling into 2026 at Tesla's new factory. We also don't know anything about the inevitable modifications that Tesla is going to make to the European version of the truck to make it more competitive in that market. So I'm excited about not only the mass production of the Tesla Semi, but also to see this truck compete in Europe. I believe it's going to do extremely well. With that being said, if you're an expert or a truck driver in Europe and you'd be willing to share your opinion on this topic of the Tesla Semi versus European competition that exists today, please email me. My email address is john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. Again, john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I would like to say thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support does make a big difference and helps make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description.
Thank you so much.